So you broke tradition a little bit and saw her before the wedding. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the first time I had actually saw her um, do drugs. Cocaine? Yes, ma'am. Wilson County, now I'm with the address of the emergency. You don't think I know you're trying to kill me? So your, your, your drug of choice was weed combined with cocaine? Cocaine, not cocaine. At 3.55 p.m. this afternoon, Whitney Houston was pronounced dead at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown had a disturbing marriage. Their relationship was filled of drugs and fighting. They pushed each other over the edge. And towards the end of Whitney's life, she couldn't take it anymore. So let's get into it. I want to talk to you guys about Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown. They were iconic but toxic, and when they started to fall apart, we learned how bad it really was. They first met back in 1989. They were at an award show, and I guess Whitney thought Bobby was cute, and she decided to go and bump into him while saying hi to her friends, and she kept knocking into him, and at one point he turned around and he said, oh, please don't do that. And she, at that point, assumed that he didn't really like her. Even though Whitney felt like Bobby didn't like her in that moment, he was fond of her. And he actually described it as love at first sight. When you find love, you find it. I mean, it finds you, I should say. Between me and her, it was just, it was, it was so instant. We were so much like each other that it made sense. Although he describes it as love at first sight, they didn't immediately get together. They started off as friends, casually hanging out, going to dinner, but you know, then leaving and going their separate ways at night because they didn't have that intimacy, at least for now. But in 2002, Whitney described Bobby as a gentleman, saying that he was sexy and smooth and a nice guy, contrary to popular belief. At this point in Bobby's career, he had established a reputation of his own after releasing music and working in the industry. So while people saw the red flags, Whitney didn't, and they ended up getting married. They had a huge wedding with 800 people. It was all decked out at a mansion in New Jersey, and here's a video clip from their wedding. A mile from Whitney Houston's home, police were checking invitations and driver's licenses to make sure people who didn't belong didn't get in. The wedding of the 28-year-old Newark native to singer Bobby Brown was held at Houston's mansion in Mendham Township, New Jersey. This had all the signs of an exclusive event, lots of guys in white tuxedos, and lots of limo. Now, Bobby has done a lot of talking since Whitney has passed away, and he claims that the first time he saw her doing coke was actually on their wedding day. Now, you broke tradition a little bit and saw her before the wedding. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the first time I had actually saw her um, do drugs. Cocaine? Yes, ma'am. Bobby says in his upcoming book, Every Little Step, he found his bride-to-be, quote, hunched over a bureau, snorting a line of coke. He says she offered him a hit, but he didn't indulge at that moment. What went through your mind when you saw that? The drugs wasn't her. She did drugs, but it, 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 drugs didn't do her. So Bobby is trying to tell this story to paint the narrative that he didn't really know what he was getting into. And I do think he's describing Whitney accurately. I don't think that the drugs really overcame her at this point. I mean, she even told Oprah that her drug use was very light. But Bobby recalls after their wedding getting more and more into drugs and it became a problem for him. He said, I would spend days to weeks just high, just high on coke and alcohol and marijuana and everything else. And even though the wedding was beautiful, it does seem like it marks the beginning of their really toxic relationship. I mean, in July 1992, Whitney and Bobby got into a fight on their honeymoon. The honeymoon is when you're supposed to be celebrating your marriage. I mean, in some way, it's kind of when you should be the happiest to be together. You just got married. You don't have any worries at this point, but they were fighting. And there was a witness to this who claims that she heard them arguing. And when they saw Whitney again, she had a visible scar on the side of her face so it got physical and i guess the cut was at least three inches this witness claims that whitney was trying to downplay the injury they said that whitney said that they had a disagreement she threw glass the glass hit the wall it shattered and that's how the cut happened couples argue all the time it's not a big deal so really being dismissive which i can see probably why she is she just got married she probably doesn't want to accept that they may have problems moving into the following year march 19 
1993, they welcomed their first child. Their daughter's named after Bobby, and her name is Bobby Christina, and Bobby claims that once she was born, Whitney's drug use escalated. Quote, for some reason, her drug use got worse. Maybe it was because she had to stop using for all those months while she was pregnant, so then once she gave birth, she just really got into it again. He wrote, I would try to keep Whitney locked in the room, telling her she shouldn't come in front of our daughter because of the way the drugs affect her. I couldn't police Whitney. She did what she wanted. And it's really scary to think about. I mean, I've learned when it comes to drug addiction, sometimes you go and you seek help. And when you try to use again, you underestimate your tolerance because you're so used to using the amount that you did prior so she probably did get pregnant stopped using as much and then when she went back to it she went way harder than her body can handle whitney admitted to increasing her drug intake after her daughter was born claiming that she was on cocaine and marijuana but she wasn't drinking claiming that bobby was a drinker and he was drinking heavily and bobby was a mean drunk so not somebody you really want to hang out with and people in whitney's life and Bobby's life saw how bad they were together and they had their thoughts. Whitney's hairstylist and friend actually told the press that their relationship was unhealthy. I mean, clearly. Quote, the problem with Whitney and Bobby was that they exacerbated each other's addiction. She did more cocaine, he drank more. But when they got together, they both started doing more cocaine and then drinking. In 2009, Whitney told Oprah that 1996 was a difficult year. She was doing drugs every day and she was not happy she was losing herself. Bobby's addiction also escalated that year because in August of 1996, he was injured in a car accident where he was driving drunk. He was later charged with driving under the influence and served jail time. Less than a year after that incident, we have another public incident where we see Whitney injured once again in 1997 while on vacation. Whitney actually received two stitches to close up a two inch cut on her left cheek her cheek again. She claimed she was hit by a rock when she was swimming, but a crew member claimed the injury took place on the boat, leading to rumors that Bobby may have caused this. And it seems like Whitney was in denial. She wanted their relationship to be okay so badly. In 1999, she told the press that her relationship was fine. No, we don't fight all the time. No, he doesn't beat me. He's a sweet, gentle man. Quote, nobody is good or bad all the time. Everybody has ups and downs, and we've had our moments they pass. And if he is being a good guy then great but the signs show that their relationship doesn't seem to be doing too well and Whitney was struggling too with her stardom her home life her own addiction and she was out here doing interviews where you could tell that she was on something I think it's a little different from what they seen before I'm I'm a lot more comfortable I'm a lot I'm older now you know I mean you pretty much get it down pat after 16 years of it now, when they were on vacation in 1997, Bobby said he would never hit Whitney, but things must have changed because in 2003, the police were called. Almost 20 years ago, Whitney called the police on Bobby, claiming that he had struck her with an open hand. It was a verbal confrontation, which escalated into a physical confrontation. Bobby seems like he's guilty here because he had left the scene before the police arrived. He had to go to court a few days later on December 10th, which he was charged with one count of battery and ordered to return to court on January 7th. Whitney attended the hearing with a visible bruise on her cheek and told reporters that they were still together. A year later in 2004, Bobby addressed the rumors claiming that he never hit his wife, that she had hit him and threw something at him. And in my opinion, I believe that Whitney has her problems, but I think Bobby has his problems and he's also a liar because he's lied so many times, time and time again, and he's even admitted to his lies. I mean, I get it. You don't want to admit that you've been hitting your wife but in 2016 he admitted that he did go and slap her around and that's why the police were called he actually claims that whitney tried to stop him from beating up their drug dealer but he was not having it and that's whenever he slapped her around so um interesting that she did call the police because like if the drug dealer's involved it kind of like i don't know it's just a little bit more complicated a bruised cheek a cut lip and the 911 call that could land Bobby Brown back in jail, this time for allegedly beating wife Whitney. Wilson County 911, what's the address of the emergency? Ma'am, I'm at, um... A shaken and unsure Whitney made the call Sunday night, seemingly struggling with the decision. What's the address, ma'am? Hello? 
So Whitney didn't feel that sure of herself at first, but she ended up giving up her information and they arrived at her home to investigate, which ultimately led to Bobby being charged. And I'm sure she was hesitant, probably also because, I mean, the drugs, but also her popularity. Anything that happens like this is going to end up all over the press. Fulton County Police Officer Curtis Young says the distress call came after a domestic dispute turned violent here at the troubled couple's Atlanta mansion. Uh, Mr. Brown struck her with an open right hand. In the police report obtained by Extra, Whitney stated that Bobby struck her after threatening to beat her ass. But by the time cops came calling, Bobby was gone on a flight to L.A. So at this point, Bobby's in big trouble. He's got a lot of legal issues. He had that DUI. Now he's got this domestic violence situation. So it's not looking good. And it wasn't great for Whitney either because right after he was sentenced, she checked into rehab. She only lasted five days out of her one month treatment. Her representative told the media that she was still going along with the program. She's just not going to stay in that home. But it does seem like she kind of just, you know, checked out early and probably didn't want to really get clean or, you know, her illness probably just just was taking over her, which is what's so sad about addiction. The last few years of our marriage, it was terrible. Both of us, you know, trying to be clean and one of us trying to be clean and the other one don't want to be clean. And it's a big struggle. They had tried on and off to get sober, but Bobby Brown says Whitney just wouldn't stop using. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that Whitney was in control of her life at all times. Even on drugs, she didn't allow people to make rules for her, which could have been a good thing. I do think there were a lot of enablers in her life, which allowed her to go down this path because a year after she went into rehab, she went back into rehab again. Part of the reason why we know so much about her rehab is because of her daughter, because it affects the custody because Bobby's in trouble. She's in trouble. Where does their daughter go? And after being together for so long, they started to realize that they are probably better apart. So in 2006, they filed her divorce but their divorce didn't go down easy because bobby wanted to have custody of their daughter he actually ended up suing whitney over custody of their daughter he not only wanted shared custody but he wanted child support and spousal support so he wanted a big payout yet he was technically homeless at this point so where are you gonna go and take your daughter he did end up going through with this lawsuit but he failed to show up to court so essentially the lawsuit was dismissed so he did not succeed. Now in 2009 is when we hear a lot from Whitney Houston and she's really opening up about her life with Oprah. This is definitely the most honest we've ever seen Whitney because up until this point, you know, she always said he was a great gentle man, but no, she's correcting the record and telling Oprah that he was terrible, emotionally abusive. She tells Oprah about a really terrible night they had where Bobby was drinking way too much and everything she did was pissing him off. I guess Bobby spit on her in front of their daughter. She said, quote, he had so much hate in his eyes for me. He cursed me all the way home and in front of his parents, and then he spit on me. She claims it escalated from there. Bobby pushed her against the wall. I was on the phone, and then I went back in, and I took the phone, and I hit him over the head with it. He just fell out on the floor. It was just drama. Ooh, it sounds dramatic. And there's no doubt in my mind that Bobby had a disdain for Whitney and her success. He was jealous that he wasn't as big of a star as she is. I mean, she even told Oprah that she admits that, yeah, he was jealous. I mean, she would go and correct people and say, oh, call me Miss Brown, call me Miss Brown, not Miss Houston, trying to make her man feel better because he's insecure. So your, your, your drug of choice was weed combined with cocaine. Oh, because it rock cocaine. It rock cocaine. Yes. Yes. In this interview, she's not only exposing Bobby, but also exposing herself and her drug problems. Oh, he had to have alcohol too, which is what I didn't do. I didn't drink, he drank. And you would do, what, volumes of that? Oh my God, I can't, I can't begin. Somebody out there is making, had me a lot of money, <laughs> you know? She doesn't really admit that her drug problems fueled the issues, but she does say that Bobby's drinking was a big part of it. He was incredibly disrespectful to her, and even though he refrained from getting violent in front of family, he would get violent and try to belittle her and make her feel like she was just a, a little girl in the presence of this man who's the big boss. Whitney also admits that the drugs did really disassociate themselves from each other. They were living in the same home, not speaking to each other, just watching the TV, and getting high over and over again. Tell me how bad did it get, the drugs? When you don't speak, and you're living in the same home, and you're sitting right next to that person, and you're not saying a word for a week, 
you're just sitting there and you just watch your TV and you go, ha ha. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> it's bad. I can't imagine. Yeah, it was like. Because what? Are you just watching TV? You're and, just, yeah. And doing coke? Yeah. Yeah. And Are you smoking? smoking? We, uh, smoking, yeah. No, we were lacing our marijuana with, with, with base. With, with, yeah. with, with yeah. base. Yeah. 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 Now, this interview with Oprah is one of the biggest like interviews we have of Whitney Houston and one of the last biggest interviews she ever got to do because she died in February 2012. She passed away at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills, which, oh my gosh, I like see that building all the time. <gasps> I didn't realize she died there. They claim they tried to resuscitate her, but they were not able to bring her back. And at that point, there was no clear cause of death. One month after Whitney's passing, the police revealed that Whitney Whitney had died by accidental drowning in her hotel bathtub. In her system, they found cocaine, marijuana, Xanax, Benadryl, and other medications. So at this point, she was having some heart disease, some issues with her body, and that's what led to her, I guess, kind of going into the bathtub and then essentially drowning. 911 emergency. Hi, how you doing? This is security from Beverly Hilton. Hi, what's going on? There? I need a paramedic. Apparently, I got a 46 year old female uh -huh. found in the bathroom. That's all I've got right now, but they're requesting paramedics. Oh, okay. Female fell in the bathroom. What room is she in? I'm not sure. She fell or she was in the bathroom with the water. 464? Four, four, 434, four, I'm sorry. That's room 434? Four, three, four? Yes. Okay, and it's not east west or anything else. It's room 434? Four, three, four, yeah. Okay, and you don't know if she's conscious of breathing at all? Uh, apparently she wasn't breathing and she's 46 year old. There was water found in her lungs, which indicate to us that she was alive when she was submerged underwater. According to the test, the level of cocaine was not enough to kill her, but the death was complicated by chronic cocaine use and heart disease. They claim she either passed out due to the intoxication from the cocaine, or she could have had a heart attack and then drowned. So of course, when Whitney passed away, everybody was talking about it, probably because they kind of saw it coming, unfortunately. I mean, she was sort of a train wreck, and what sucks is that nobody really stood up for her and tried to save her from herself. So when she died, it made big news. Everyone was talking about it, and we lost such a talented singer at a young age. At 3.55 p.m. this afternoon, Whitney Houston was pronounced dead at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. The scene inside her room was chaotic. ABC has learned it appears members of Houston's entourage found her unresponsive body and called hotel security. Now, when Whitney passed away, a lot of people turned to Bobby and asked him, like, what happened? Bobby claims that he was not to blame for her death. Quote, I did not know she was struggling with drugs still. It's hard to maintain sobriety that way. People said to me, the one thing that they heard over and over again, that you were the one that led Whitney to heavy drug use. Well, you were the one. It wasn't me. I take, I take my part, and I take it hard for me even being a part of it but we all have our, our, our own minds so it's a tragic loss that whitney houston is gone but what makes this story even more tragic is her daughter is gone as well because in january 2015 her daughter is found unresponsive in the bathtub just like her mother. Supposedly, her housemate named Max found her unresponsive and face down. She was given CPR and revived before being rushed to the hospital, but she ended up unresponsive and on a ventilator. Now, Bobby Christina did not pass away right away. They really tried to keep her around. She actually survived for months under medical supervision, but passed away in July 2015. Her cause of death was ruled to be a combination of drowning and drug intoxication. It is so sad that she passed away in this similar way and it just like it's just depressing. But in 2018, Bobby Brown decided to do the most by releasing the Bobby Brown story, which exposed a lot about his relationship with Whitney. Let's just quickly go through some of the claims that Bobby has. I mean, it's unfortunate Whitney can't really defend herself here, but this is Bobby's story. He claims that Whitney cheated on him as well. He cheated throughout their relationship and she cheated too. Bobby Brown may have been the bad boy of R&B, but Whitney was no angel either. The legendary singer also did her fair share of creeping around and even got caught by Brown bringing a side piece to the house. In this biopic, Bobby also explains that he almost shot Whitney at one point. Their fighting just escalated so badly that he decided to get violent and threaten her with a weapon, which is not really a flex. Like, I, I don't know if I would want to tell that story. Bobby almost put a cap in Whitney's 
Look, drugs will make you do some crazy things. And this was never more evident than when an intoxicated and paranoid Brown thought Houston was trying to kill him. You don't think I know you're trying to kill me? But Bobby also opens up about how the drugs affected his body. For example, he claims that he had strokes and seizures because of the amount of drugs they were consuming. It was the excessive use of narcotics that caused Bobby Brown to have a seizure and a stroke. Facing that near-death moment caused both Bobby and Whitney to want to get clean. So clearly these two were not made for each other, but in 2022, Bobby actually claimed that Whitney was the love of his life. He claimed that they fought really hard verbally, but they loved even harder. Our love was strong for each other. We showed it to each other time and time again, over and over, which is so sad to think about because like, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, they definitely were not great for each other, but they went through so much that they probably did have that deep bond. He said that Whitney was the kindest, sweetest person that he knew, claiming that if they had not divorced, maybe she would still be alive and they could have helped each other out of this addiction. But the world will never know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a sad story. It breaks my heart. It makes me like want to cry thinking like the daughter died the same way. Like there's just so much to unpack here. So I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. List your favorite Whitney song and I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye guys.